What's happening, y'all? Um, uh, um, uh, um. What's good with it? Um, Lombardicus Prime, Vegan Vach, as a matter of fact, Dead Hat Lombardi, Dad Hat Lombardi, up in here. What's good, y'all? Um, wanted to do another check in with the draft community, see what's good with y'all. Now these, now, now these people that's on my channel talking about we never talk draft, and then it's time to talk draft, and just look at how many people I got in my chat now. Come on now. Them damn cowboy streams y'all be sick of. Be having 300. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, um, I wanted to uh, touch on a few topics today, man, just to stay current with uh, with uh, draft events, stay current with thoughts. You know, I like to reach out and let y'all know what I'm thinking as I'm, um, as I'm thinking of it. Um, Quick information real fast. If you're a Cowboys fan, I'm going to try to do another stream later. Me and Foots the King are going to talk Cowboys draft. This is everybody draft. This show is everybody draft. Uh, later on, me and Foots are going to get into Cowboys draft. So y'all hang tight. Stay tuned for that. Um, today, I wanted to talk about defensive tackles. I was watching defensive tackles all week, and uh, I kind of wanted to get some thoughts out on them. Romario Gale, salute to you, sir. Dropping a dime in the super chat. I wanted to get some thought out, some thoughts out, um, just about defensive tackles in this draft. There's plenty of them. As I just look over at my list, it's about ten guys you can really get excited about. Um, you know, then another, you know, five to six to seven that can really come in and play for you. So I want to touch on those guys too. We'll cross that road in a minute. Um, let me put Q and A at the end of this too, because at the end of this thing. We're going to absolutely get some Q&A. Plus, I got some film for y'all uh, once we're done here. You know, back in old Vach Lombardi live stream fashion, you know, we used to uh, come together, do the live streams, and right after I have some film for y'all, we're doing that today. Uh, also, I wanted to talk about take an L culture. I think it's uh, it's something that's really uh, that's really ridiculous in our, in our community, in this community where rarely nobody gets it right, where um, – it's 32 teams with 253 some odd possibilities to pick or pick the right player in the right spot. And when, you know, somebody picks in correctly, you know, we go into take a L culture and that could, you know, discourage somebody from making the right picks. I think I make a lot of right picks, you know what I'm saying? But I don't like to get pat on my back for the right picks. You know what I mean? People will come at me for, for some opinions that didn't quite pan out or that they were just impatient about. But we'll cross that road when we get there. Shouts out to Leighton Vanderish. Um, let's get into defensive tackle talk, right? I was watching uh who in particular was I watching? I was watching Jeffrey Simmons, right, from Mississippi State. And um, you can go check out my Jeffrey Simmons film session or whatnot, and it'll it'll kind of give you give you a thought about uh what I what I feel about him or whatnot. But what, what when I was watching Jeffrey Simmons, um, and this kind of ties into take a L culture, right? When I was t when I was looking at Jeffrey Simmons, I realized that like everybody, all these defensive tackles kind of got a combination of traits to where they're good in some spots, but and I don't even, I won't even say bad in other spots, but where other guys really excel in those spots to where when it's time for us to do position rankings. It's going to be pretty difficult. I think the only clear-cut guy is Quentin Williams at number one. That's just how I feel about him. Quinn is the best player in the draft. Over Nick Bosa, over Josh Allen. I said that shit. Take a sip of the happy juice. Um, I don't think there's a soul in this draft that's better than Quentin Williams, regardless of position. Everybody else, though, right, I think it's really going to come down to a preference thing. What do you prefer? You know, philosophy, scheme. Lieutenant Dan likes to refer to SARF, scheme-adjusted round fit, who basically fits you more. You know what I mean? I think it's all about preference, man, and what you're, what you're looking for. 
uh, the comment that I made on my Jeffrey Simmons uh, film session, and it ain't necessarily, I don't, I don't really, I don't script my film session. I just kind of watch, record, and go back and edit it, you know, whatever. So y'all really get my 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 uh, raw thoughts or whatnot. I was watching Jeffrey Simmons, and man, it was this one play where Jeffrey came off the ball, fop fop quick with his hands. I'm like, man, I like that. Fop fop quick with his hands. His eyes was up. He found the ball better than some other people do. But then when he got past the block, he got to the back hip of the guard and he chased the quarterback. Boy, it looked like he was jogging. <laughs> and he wasn't jogging. He was running. You know what I mean? Like he didn't have that, uh, you know? And in my mind, I was like, boy, I bet Ed Oliver would have caught that guy. <laughs> boy. boy, I know Rashawn Gary would have caught that guy with his athleticism. Even a guy like um, uh, Gerald Willis from Miami. I know Gerald would have caught that guy. You know? And and Pat said, damn, 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 is he that slow? No, Pat, he ain't slow. Because if you look at typical D-line evaluation, typical D-linemen really don't move that way. But we got Ed Oliver and Rashawn Gary in this class, and we're going to have to evaluate those guys on that curve. You know what I'm saying? And that's kind of what changes up with with draft every year. When draft change, when drafts change, we got to change, you know? So we can't look at defensive linemen as trash can full of dirt guys anymore. You know what I'm saying? We 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 can't we can't look at them in that way. Because I'm not saying Jeffrey Simmons is slow or unathletic. Because if you look at him, he 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 looks like a damn action figure. You know what I mean? He's not slow. But Rashawn Gary and Ed Oliver will smoke him in a foot race. I'm sure, especially Rashawn Gary. <laughs> Rashawn Gary might be the most athletic 280 pound cat. I don't want to say ever. I think that's a bit premature to say ever. But Rashawn Gary will whoop any of these cats in a foot race. 50 milli. Drop the dime in the super chat. Salute to you, sir. I think Rashawn Gary will be in it, any of these guys in a in a, in a a damn foot race, clearly. His athleticism for 280-some-odd pounds is ridiculous. So when we look at guys like Jeffrey Simmons, who's right up under that, and Gerald Willis, who I think is in there with Jeffrey with Jeffrey Simmons, they don't move like Gary. And right up under that, you get the, you know, the Christian Wilkins tier of speed defensive tackle guys. Right? Then we then we get down to like Christian Wilkins. Not Christian, pardon me, uh Dexter Lawrence. Right? We get the Dexter Lawrence who's great, who's fantastic everywhere else. But he ain't really rushing the passer or giving you speed on the back end like that. You know what I mean? So I just thought it was interesting to get that to get that combination of traits to see those guys. And I know he's a nose. I just see right here, uh, Will uh, Will T. Salute to you. He's a, he's a true nose, sure. But Quentin Williams could be considered a true nose too. And I think Quentin Williams moves moves pretty well. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I think that's that's something we got to look at when we're making position rankings for these top ten or so defensive tackles. I think it's we got to we got to really consider what we're looking for what our respective teams are looking for um you know scheme or whatever our preferences or whatnot me personally i like a defensive lineman that can move sure but i like a defensive lineman that has control punch and can read things in front of him right that makes a very versatile player um you've been hearing my um my um Vach-isms this year. I've been using the uh using the the terms controlled chaos a lot. You know, when you can tear shit up in the middle, but still have enough control to where you're not losing a ball carrier. You know how Ed Oliver will whoop the shit out of whoever in front of him? But he'll lose the ball carrier somewhere. You know what I mean? He's not a controlled chaos guy. But how Quentin Williams will boom stop moving. Oh, there you go. Uh, <laughs> tear shit up. Or how um, Gerald Willis 
he's tearing stuff up, kind of like a slasher at guard in the NBA, or whatever. He's tearing stuff up on the move, but he finds his guy. Mm, he gets there. Jeffrey Simmons tearing stuff up. I see the ball carry. You see what I mean? A guy that's proactive in getting off blocks, a guy that can find the ball carrier, a guy that's not getting blown backwards, a guy that's maintaining gap integrity. That's what I find important. That's what I really like about Quentin Williams. Really like about Quentin Williams. And that's the type of stuff that bumps Ed Oliver down my list. You know? That bumps Ed Oliver smooth down my list. Um, To where I value guys like, Jeffrey Simmons and Ed Oliver is really going to be a conversation for me. I think it should be a conversation for everybody. Rashawn Gary, probably the most athletic, but Rashawn Gary got a lot of D line to learn. That's really going to have to be a conversation for me. Um, Christian Wilkins, who in his system of defense, he's probably asked to just get up field and kick a lot of ass anyway. We're going to have to really have a realistic, um, conversation about these guys you know so um I, I would like to know what y'all think i'm gonna be heavy in the chat box i'm gonna be scrolling through kind of seeing what y'all uh seeing what y'all gotta say um i think it's interesting man i think it's a great year to get a to uh to get a defensive tackle and i think um i think by design um it's gonna be so many defensive tackles that can play that I think they're going to get pushed down the board because teams are just going to say, oh, we could just get one later. Um, I'm saying Draymond Jones. I, I, I haven't watched Draymond Jones formally. I've watched him in passing. And I don't really want to give y'all information unless I'm flat out, uh, you know, ready to talk about him yet. Um, I'm seeing uh, seeing guys talk about Kalen, Kalen Saunders from Western Virginia. Let me just help out right here, too. Let me help out, too. Um, I know – with with senior bowl we kind of get um we kind of get hype with our the best of the senior bowl guy you know we see them they play well and now we think that they're in the top conversation with these guys and i i i don't i don't think so kaylin saunders ain't in the conversation with these first few guys and i like kaylin saunders um but he ain't up there with these guys. Kalen Saunders could be like a fourth round guy, possibly. And that's no knock on him. It's just that when you look at, let me just name my list off. Quentin Williams, Ed Oliver, Rashawn Gary, uh, Jeffrey Simmons. I'll give Draymond Jones benefit of the doubt. I haven't watched him formally yet. We'll cross that road in a minute. Um, I got to watch Jerry Tillery as well. Him not showing up to the, to the senior bowl really Really make my ass itch a little bit. Christian Wilkins, Gerald Willis. And I think that list kind of stops right there. And one of those guys is going to end up in the in the early third rounds, you know. Somebody going to end up in the early thirds. And we ain't even talking about edge guys. We just talking about defensive tackles. Um, and Kalen Saunders ain't on that level with those guys. Then we keep reading, right? Um, Isaiah Bugs, guys like uh, uh, Terry Buckner. Demarcus Christmas from Florida State that Pat keep talking about because he's biased to 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 Florida State. Um, Dontavious Russell, Dalen Mack um, uh, from uh, from uh, Tam U. Greg Gaines, like it's, he got a lot of competition. It's plenty competition. So yes, Kalen Saunders looked good in the Senior Bowl, but the Senior Bowl is exclusive to seniors. It's 134 players that we ain't even see. You know what I mean? So I really want everybody to just kind of slow it down a little bit, to just kind of slow it down. I like Kalen Saunders, but his levels, talents and shit, you know, it's, it's, it's levels to these guys, right? Um, So we'll have to cross that road whenever we get there. I will watch film on Bugs and Christmas and guys like that, Dalen Mack, whatever, but um, they're not going to get videos or whatnot. Um, so that's my thoughts on that. Y'all let me know what you think. Um, yo, Vach, you think you could check out Cameron Brown, linebacker from Penn State? We talking about defensive tackles today. <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, I did my list for linebackers. It wasn't terribly long. Uh, I don't know if this is one of them linebacker years. Uh, <laughs> we'll cross that road. We'll see, man. We'll we'll uh we'll see. But we talking about we talking about D tackles today. 
That's what we're talking about. We're talking about D tackles. Um, best pass rushing defensive tackles this year. I think Quinnen can get after the passer. Ed can definitely get after it. Rashawn Gary is going to be really good at it. Jeffrey Simmons is going to be good at it. Christian Wilkins, Gerald Willis is going to be really good at it. You know, I think anybody that's 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 labeled three tech for me is going to be um is going to be a pretty good pass rusher. That's just my opinion. I think anybody that I label three tech are uh, are going to be able to get after the passer. Um, it ain't a whole bunch of trash slow three techs this year. It's not a lot of them. They don't really make they don't really make three techs in that way anymore. You know what I mean? Uh, three techs are are built to be a little more athletic. Um, so much to that that sometimes you can get a defensive end to play B gap, uh, or that some teams like the Cowboys um, they're looking for one text that can get upfield and be athletic. So that's interesting. That's interesting. Who's your best one tech? Depends on where they play Quinn and Williams. Um, I think Dexter is is probably as as true of a one tech as you can get. Um, one take nose kind of guy. I like him there, but Quentin Williams can play can play one. He can play three. I have Quentin Williams so goddamn good at everything. I don't know where they're gonna play him at. No idea. No idea. Um, for those of you that are that are new here tuning in, this show ain't gonna be too long. But um, uh, if you're a Cowboys fan, uh, me and Foots the King are are, are uh, gonna talk draft tonight. So I'll really get into uh, some of that draft talk. Cowboy wise, a little bit later. This is pretty much for everybody. Let me talk about taking L culture for a little bit while y'all get y'all's questions in and while I get ready to put this film out for y'all. Um, take a L culture is pretty trashy, man. <laughs> take a L culture and oh, you don't like this player because of such and such culture? That's pretty trash. Um, why can't I like a player without thinking that another player is, you know, bad or is trash or whatever? Because I know it's gonna happen. This was gonna happen. I'm going to say a lot of things about Ed Oliver that aren't good things, you know? And Ed Oliver does some good things, but he does some things that aren't so good that flat out piss me off, right? And that's going to make someone else say, damn, Vach, you down on Ed Oliver? No! No. When we talk draft, it's comparative to your peers, you know? So when I say, damn, I wish Ed Oliver used his hands like like Quentin Williams would. Yeah, I'm being high on Quentin, but that don't mean I'm down on Ed. I just think Ed has one thing that he does really well. You put Ed in B-gap and tell him to go forward, he'll do it. He'll do it, and he'll be pretty damn good at it. Um, as a third down pass rusher, Ed, Ed and Rashawn Gary are those guys, but they both, if they get blocked, they got to learn how to get off them. And a big part about being a defensive line is – you got to learn how to get guys off of you. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, Quinn and Williams know how to get guys up off of them. But that's not to say that I that I don't like Garrett or that I don't like Ed Oliver. I was talking to a cat, my man, Tydrick. He's a, um, he's a uh, scout in New Jersey. He's a commentator up there. He does a lot of, you know, re- recruiting things up there. And um, he's a he's a he's a uh, he's a big Rashawn Gary guy. I think Gary played ball in Jersey or something, and um, he recruited him. He da 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 got him sent to Michigan or whatever. And um, he searched Rashawn Gary videos, and he came across mine. Shots out to him because me and me and Todd cool now. Uh, we wasn't beefing at first or not like that. But 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 Todd told me when when I was talking to him, he was like he was watching Rashawn Gary. He saw the bad things I had to say about him. He was like, man, fuck this dude, man, Rashawn Gary, fucking beast, and goddamn, fuck this dude, fuck this dude. Fuck this dude. Um, but when he stopped and he thought about it and he let his emotion go down and he listened to what I was saying, I was right. <laughs> I was right. Rashawn Gary does need to learn how to get off blocks and not get so caught up in this fight and still find the ball in the backfield. He thought I was hating when I was saying that. But if you watch the film, it's there. And that's where I think take an L culture or um, you don't like this guy culture is pretty toxic. Example, Layden Van Der Esch. Um, Layden Van Der Esch, in my personal opinion, was not a first-round pick. First round talent, so to speak. Now, when you go first round, that don't necessarily mean you're a first round talent because Dan Rashawn Penny went first round. But I only had 15 first round grades last year. But just because you're not a first round talent doesn't mean you're not going to be a great player in the National Football League. 
Philip Lindsay um was a was was a great rookie running back last year. A standout. He led something something around something rookie running backs last year, right? But he's not a first round talent. Even with hindsight, even if we redrafted, Philip Lindsay is not a first round talent. You don't necessarily draft guys based on production. You draft guys based on traits, talents, and how you think you can fix them. You know what I'm saying? You don't necessarily trade guys. You don't necessarily draft guys based on uh, based on how good you think they'll be. Because if it's up to us, all our players will be good. The guys that we draft in the seventh round should be good if we draft correctly, right? So when I was talking about Leighton Van Der Esch, I was saying, you know, man, I like him. He can run and cover a little bit, but I I, I, don't, I ain't ready to give him a first round grade there. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think he got problems dealing with blocks. I think he can be a, be a bit stronger. He reads keys well. He does a lot of this great stuff when he's not getting blocked. He can open field tackle his ass off, but there's a lot of things that I don't like about him. And boy, did Cowboys fans let me have it when Leighton Van Der Esch went out there and had a great rookie campaign. But boy, when the nitty gritty got to the nitty gritty and the Cowboys D-line didn't play as, as, as well as they normally do and Leighton Van Der Esch started getting blocked, people say, damn, Leighton Van Der Esch really ain't that strong as I thought he was. Oh. <laughs> Damn, Leighton Van Der Esch getting blocked. Like, like man, Leighton Van Der Esch. Damn, Leighton kind of disappeared. I was like, ah, damn, Leighton Van Der Esch. I'm not doing this to get pat on the back. I'm just saying that we have to find a uh, find a new way to give objective opinion and not be part of take a L culture or <laughs> you don't like this guy, coach. I like Van Der Esch. I just really wanted Harold Landry. <laughs> I really, really wanted. Harold Landry, whatever. Um, we had this conversation about Hunter Renfro. Me and me and me and me and Lieutenant Dan had sort of a head button on 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 Twitter about Hunter Renfro. I was minding my business, leaving Chick Fil A, I believe. This is a while ago, a couple days ago, and somebody asked me, "Vach, will Hunter Renfro get drafted?" And I was like, eh, "I don't think so, but I do think thirty-two teams would be interested in him." That's cool. That's a, I think that's a great answer. <laughs> that's a great answer. Um, remind me to get to Aaron's Aaron's comment. Um, because it's a bit emotional in my opinion. Um, um, Hunter Hunter Renfro, right? I don't think he'll he'll be drafted. And people started hitting me. Oh well, there's a lot Hunter can do. He can be drafted in a da ba da ba do ba da. Well, you don't get. You, they say Hunter's going to be a great third down target in the league. And boy, he moves the chains and he catches all the passes. And I go, sure, undrafted players can do that as well. And they started doing. Well, the Julian Edelman and Wes Welker. I'm like, man, Edelman was a seventh round pick, and Amendola and Welker and Cole Beasley were all undrafted. Great third down players, great nuanced route runners, great, great, uh, great chain movers. They all are. But you don't get drafted for moving the chains. You get drafted. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And Hunter Renfro ain't as athletic as them. He, I don't think he's that on that level of route runner as them, because I think quickness got a lot to do with your route running. You know what I mean? Um, I think Hunter knows how to get just open. He knows how to just get open, and the ball got to be in the tightest of windows. And when it gets there, he will catch it. But as far as physical traits, Hunter Renfro ain't got them, and that's what a lot of people draft players for. They they draft them because of their physical traits. I think Hunter Renfro, we, I don't know. I think he's a very complicated case. But even if he's a good player in the league, wherever the hell he, he can go to Tom Brady and lead the league in catch. I don't care. But that that ain't what gets you drafted. I think Hunter Renfro would be a cool little undrafted free agent, and some te- all 32 teams going to want to give him a shot because all 32 teams like football players. But a lot of football players go undrafted. You know what I'm saying? Holden Hill went undrafted. Guys like uh, what's my man? Semi Cobbs went undrafted. Um, 
man, I went on a whole thing about this. Philip Lindsay went undrafted. It's fine. It happens. It happens. Somebody was like, well, you think Andy Isabella ain't getting drafted neither, huh? Well, Andy Isabella's short, but he he's going to run faster than everybody else. Hunter Hunter Renfro ain't as athletic. Pona Ford, thank you, Josh. I said Pona Ford as well. Pona Ford was one of my favorite guys. He didn't get drafted. Measurables, <laughs> talent, all this stuff goes into it. Physical traits. You know what I mean? Me saying Hunter Renfro ain't getting drafted doesn't mean I'm not saying he's a bad player. He just ain't getting drafted. Uh, and even if he does get drafted, I'm not going to be hurt like, oh, my God, he got drafted. Good for Hunter. I just was asked. <laughs> Somebody asked what I think <laughs> with that goofy ass. Let me rewind a little bit. Let me, uh, let me approach Aaron because this goes into the culture as well. Aaron says, pardon me, let me set the whole picture up. When I was like, I didn't want Van Der Esch necessarily, I wanted Harold Landry on my team. Um, then Aaron came with his comment. He says, and you see what Landry is doing. Cool. This is another culture we kind of got to fix in the, in the draft community or whatnot. People are rather impatient with player development. Nelson Nobles drive five of the super chat. Do you think the Oakland Raiders would draft Montez Cleveland and Andy Isabella? Hey man, cause you drive five of my super chat. I hope they draft all of them. <laughs> Andy probably won't won't be a first round pick, and you'll probably have to have to trade up to get Montez and Cleveland. But since you drop five in the super chat, hell yeah. Anyway, um, we have to get rid of this impatient culture that we have. This this impatience, that little thing that we do. Um. When players come into the league, they're going up against people that have been in the league for years or year. They are just playing college football. You know what I mean? So even with Leighton Vanderish, when he's running around free, run free, Leighton Vanderish. Fly little Pelican. But when people got hands on him, Leighton looked like this was his first year in the league. Layden and all and a lot of this got to do with scheme fit. If Layden Van Der Esch played the Mike linebacker for the Lions, he would look terrible. If he played Sam linebacker for the Jets in a three four system or something like that, Layden Van Der Esch will look terrible. But he plays Will for the Dallas Cowboys, and that has another thing to do with um with player fit as well. You know what I mean? With uh with my draft stock for Leighton Vander. A lot of people thought Leighton could play everything. I thought Leighton was a will linebacker because he's best when he's running free. Dallas Cowboys had a great D-line and a great system. They put Leighton Vander at will, where he ran free and cleaned up mostly. A great, uh, a great thump guy in Damian Wilson and Jalen Smith. Leighton Vander looks great with us. Because that's his fit. So what Aaron is saying, well, you see what Harold, Land Harold Landry have a better year than Leighton Van Der Esch. Harold Landry is in a whole nother position. Harold Landry is on a whole nother team, a whole nother situation. Plus, it's his first year. Get ready for it this, this year. Somebody's going to have a, a bad preseason. They're going to go, damn, Vice, they having a bad preseason. What's going on, Vice? Stop. 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 Let people get their wings up under them. You know? Saquon Barkley is amazing. He's the second overall pick. He can go do stuff day one. You know? Guys like um, Baker Mayfield, I thought Baker was amazing. Let him do stuff year one. Let him do stuff. You know? Let me, let me, let me think of a good example. Uh, let me think of... Uh, Coach Evans can can attest to this. He's in the chat box. This year, Ronnie Stanley is way better than rookie year, Ronnie Stanley. People are ready to call Ronnie Stanley a little soft as rookie year. I mean, he can kick and move a little bit. But people were starting to call Ronnie a little soft when he came. Ronnie Stanley now is way better than Ronnie Stanley then. We got to get players in their man body first. Demarcus Lawrence used to be skinny, bony. Marcus Lawrence had to learn the game. Everybody's not going to come out year one and be great. Everybody's not going to be amazing year one. Um, 
Noah Spence developed into a great player. The best example, timeout, Eagles fans, Brandon Graham. Is it any Eagles fans in the chat box? Boy, was Brandon Graham not really nothing <laughs> in the first two years or so. Man, Brandon Graham, lift some weights. Brandon Graham, get back on point. Boy, does Brandon Graham look better. Sacking Tom Brady in the Super Bowl and shit. You got to allow people to grow into who they are. You know? I don't, I don't, I don't feel, I don't feel good making a final assessment about a player till like year three. See some people ask me about Taco. I think it's incredibly early for Taco. It's incredibly early for Taco. Shit, the bad. You, you wanna know what? You wanna know the bad thing that happened to Taco? Randy Gregory got clean. It's hard to get on the field when damn Randy Gregory on on. You got to get on the field. You've got to develop. You know, Taco's still gonna lift his waist and get strong, but you've got to develop. Facts, Brandon Graham looked like a bust the first few years. Sure, sure. Of course he did. Um, So when I look at Harold Landry, I go, man, Harold Landry's going to be great in this league one day. When I watch film on any of these guys, uh, Ed Oliver, I say, okay, cool. Ed Oliver going to be a, a – he he's he's going to be a, a, a cold B-guy player one day. But when you hear me say Quentin Williams is better than, 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 better than Ed Oliver, that's not me saying Ed is trash. That's me saying – Man, Quentin probably gonna pick it up a little, a little, just a little faster than Ed Bear. He's gonna, he's gonna, he's gonna pick it up quicker. Devontae Adams is a good example. Solomon Thomas, hey boy, look, the 49ers drafted Solomon as a, as an end. They put his ass in B gap quick, didn't he? <laughs> didn't they? <laughs> just it take a little time, man. Pat said Taco was a first round. He was a first rounder because the Cowboys picked at, at 27 that year, 28, whatever they picked that year. He was in the back of the first round. You know what I'm saying? So he wasn't really a first round talent. He was drafted in the first round, which is different. So I think we need to have in, in the in the draft culture, and I know this ain't gonna help shit because football fans are idiots as a whole. Maybe, maybe these particular people in this chat box, some of y'all maybe, I don't know. But football fans as a whole. The majority of them are pretty are 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 pretty stupid. What's up, Unc? Um, Nelson Aguilar is another good example. You know, he's he 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 has a first couple rocky years, but he gets in a system that works. He gets a quarterback that throws to him. Alshon Jeffrey takes off a little pressure. They finally put uh, Nelson Aguilar in the slot. Different player. Nick Noble says, in my in my personal opinion, Christian Wilkins is better than, than Quentin Williams. Hey man, you 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 put five in my super chat. You can say whatever the hell you want. But <laughs> Christian Wilkins ain't better than uh than Quentin Williams. But you my guy though. Um, so peep this out. I'm about to take some QA's for a little bit. And uh I'll say about for 19 minutes. I'll say a, a 19, 19 minute or so QA. And then we'll wrap this thing up. And uh, I got some film for y'all, too, afterwards. I'll disclose it afterwards. <laughs> afterwards. Uh, give me 30 seconds to kind of name this thing real fast. Let's go. Mm-hmm. Nene know what I'm talking about because she kind of got the heads up on, like, everything that I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh. Uh, film session. Asterisk, asterisk. Mm-hmm. 2019 film session. And. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. And. What's the boy name? Mm-hmm. Is that title too long, YouTube? Is that title too long? Hell no, nah, we got action. So let me hit my premiere button. It's gonna come out at wait a minute, what's today? Oh, that ain't right. It needs to come out at 5 30 on the 30th schedule we're gonna premiere so soon as we done here we're gonna run our asses over there and um and we're gonna run it for the cardio we're gonna we're gonna hit them with that um okay so cool Ch- chat box what we talking about what we talking about oh yeah 
Uh, you think Nick Bosa is going to be ready uh, day one? You know, I don't really know about the extra stuff. You know, with the um, with the with the players or whatever, I just kind of watch film and run it. <laughs> you know, I just watch film and run it. So I don't I don't necessarily uh, I don't know about injuries or anything. Combine help with a lot of that, but I don't know about injuries or uh, I don't know about interviews or nothing like that. I don't really have a good idea about if somebody is gun under the seat guy. I don't know, but um. Sure, Nick Bosa. <laughs> uh, is he gonna be healthy or not? I don't know. I, I, I don't know if if, uh, if Nick's gonna be healthy or not. But um, he's still gonna be one of the better players in this draft. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, let's see. Let's see. What else we got up in here? Do y'all think Dante Fowler is gonna figure it out? Mm-hmm. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, Vach, I love our Cowboys, but damn, Taco got to put more weight on and ball for us. That's that's microwave culture, Pat. That's that's microwave culture. Just hold on, just hold on. <laughs> Let guys develop. Let guys develop. I know you want every pick to to come in and whoop ass. I, I know, I know. But let guys fly. Let guys fly. Luckily. We don't need them. And when I say that, I want Taco on the team, but Taco is a rotational player for us because Randy and DeMarcus are gangsters. You know what I mean? So hopefully Taco can develop, you know. Who are the three techs to watch for this year? Shit, all of them. <laughs> all of them. Uh, Jeffrey Simmons, Rashawn Gary, Ed Oliver in contention for a second guy behind Quinn and Williams for you. Um, I think... It's too early for me. It's too early for me. But I'll definitely let y'all know. Um, if y'all been following my channel, you know it's hard as hell to bend me in a, to back me up into a corner. It's hard to back me into a corner. Um, but I'll come out with my rankings when I come out with them, and y'all will definitely see them. We might work on them together. I don't know. We'll cross that road. We'll see. The average of first round picks are a bust. Do you think this year will be better? Cleo Lombardi, dog. Watch your diamonds. We never know. Um. D time was good. When is quarterback week this year? Mm -hmm. So it's still January. <laughs> it's still January. I'm way ahead of schedule. I, I'm way ahead of schedule, but it's 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 absolutely January. Do you think Charles who fits better uh, as a four three defensive end or as an inside guy? Uh, I think he can play some three tech in pass rush situations, but I think he's gonna be like a base left end type of guy. But don't take my word for it. Just, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Should be doo -doo. Ba -doo -boo. I think you can still label a guy a bust after after two or three years because when guys because when you draft guys early, um, they should be able to contribute pretty soon. I don't agree. <laughs> I don't agree. Uh if the guy gets a good four years in, it doesn't help your team. I, I don't agree that especially first round picks or um guys get drafted early. Yeah, I don't I don't necessarily agree about guys getting drafted early that they should necessarily step in day 1 and play. This is my notion. This is my this is my opinion about it, right? My opinion is is that if you can draft a rookie and they come in day 1 and play, that means whatever position that is on your team, it wasn't that so it wasn't that sold at first. It wasn't that it wasn't that great at first, you know? Um, and of course that's why guys get drafted or whatever. Sure. But you know, you pick a, if you, like if you draft Taco Charles in the first year and he's your starting defensive end first year, boy, <laughs> boy, am I nervous? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, um, I kind of don't want my, my first round picks to, to play well. You know what I'm, I mean? To, I don't, pardon me. I don't want my first round picks to play in, to start immediately, to be the first guy immediately. Because, you know, if they don't start, that means my team was good there. <laughs> my team was good. And, they, you know, whatever, whatever. So, we'll see. <clears throat> uh, Sean Doty dropped a 10 in the Super Chat. Salute to you, sir. If you had to pick a three-tick or a one-tick in the end of round one, who do you think would be – who do you think would be there? That is a good value in round one. That's one of them Cleo Lombardi questions, but you but you dropped ten, so I'll I'll try to figure it out for you. 
I'm seeing some people say Draymond Jones is going to be a late first. I haven't really watched film. We'll see. I think Gerald Willis will be available. He might be an early second round guy. So if you late in the first, you might have to take him there if you really want him. Dexter Lawrence, he might be a mid second round guy. I don't know, but he'll be there. He ain't going to last that long in the second round. So if you want him, trade up and go get him. Mm. That's a couple guys, and I'm going to have to watch the film on the rest of them to really have a good idea. Uh, people saying Tillery. We'll see. Greg Steele, are you going live during the draft? We'll see, man. We'll see. Uh, I typically like to enjoy the draft as a fan, but y'all really putting putting pressure on me to get my live reaction, so <laughs> we'll see. Uh, if you need an offensive line or a defensive line, would it be smart to get the O line first and get in the D line to lay rounds? Is the talent drop off for D line drastic? Well, um, fifty milli. That's a uh, that's a great comment. That's 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 kind of what I was talking about. Uh, I think that is so many D linemen that I think I think a lot of teams are gonna say, "Yo, it's a lot of D linemen, man." We'll, we'll, we I mean, we could probably just get one later. You know what I mean? I think there's gonna be a run on defensive end that some of those guys are gonna be reached for. I think right around when Cleveland Farrell comes off the board. I think right around the time Cleveland and Montez come off the board, I think Ja'Kai Polite's going to get reached for. Um, Jalen Ferguson probably gets reached for. You know what I mean? And that may cause a run of edge guys. Um, I also think that like a possible run at receiver could happen. Don't know exactly where yet, but um, I'll let you know in the future. A run at defensive tackle. I think Ed Oliver, Rashawn Gary, Jeffrey Simmons is probably going to be taken roughly around the same amount of time, right? But then it's going to be a lull, and you're going to get guys like uh, Tillery, Jones, Wilkins, Willis. You know what I mean? So we'll see. Will the Cowboys get offensive lineman Chris Lindstrom in the second? I think Chris Lindstrom will, will be available in the third somewhere. Somewhere. I don't know. We'll see. I, I like Chris, but I ain't necessarily trying to reach for him. If I can get Chris in the third, I'll take him. Um. But I think we can get a damn, damn good player in the second. Not that I'm saying Chris ain't the best, you know, player, but you know, we'll see. Is Ed Oliver the second best defense tackle in your mind? It's pretty early for me to say right now. Um, you can ask me again during, you know, um, position rankings. Ask me again during position rankings. Hmm. Vach, I thought you were going to going to the draft this year. I ain't really trying to go to Nashville. <laughs> I ain't trying to go to Nashville. Um, I'm definitely trying to go to Vegas, though. Boy, am I trying to go to Vegas. And um, I got to go to uh, to uh, Virginia in uh, May, early May. Maybe directly after the draft. I don't know. We'll see. So, um, yeah, I, I, I may or may not. I may or may not. Carolina Pimp, what's cracking lacking with you? We talking about defensive tackles. We've talked about your Clemson guys. What's up? What's up? Mm. How do you rank Christian Wilkins amongst the uh, amongst defensive tackles? Uh, we'll see. We'll see. It's pretty early. Pretty early. Haley Mew, dope last name Mew too. Um, I plan on going to the twenty twenty draft. See you there. Salute Haley. Um. Picture Haley, and I couldn't picture leaving the side. Even if I hated Kim, I grit my teeth and I try to make it work with her. At least for Haley's sake, I know I made a mistake and I'm only human, but I'm mad enough to face it today. Uh, will pure run stoppers like Dalen Mac, Greg Gaines, and Dontavious Russell go? Where will they go? Um, they'll go later. They'll go later. Um, because of what you said, pure run stoppers. Um, I, I will say this. I think um, – I think Greg Gaines got a little bit of my respect in the senior bowl because I seen him move around a little bit. I think Greg, I think Greg can really move around a bit. Um, so I'm not saying he's not going to be a nose guy or like a pure run stopper or whatever, but um, it depends on what your what your team needs or whatever. They may go third or fourth or something like that. I don't know. We'll see. Um, <clears throat> but um, I do think the team is going to teams are 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 going to um, prioritize. Um, these three techs that get up field in a hurry, you know. Um, I think what's going to be more important, you know, man, 
Aaron Donald got got twenty sacks this year, man. <laughs> Aaron Donald got 20 sacks, bro. And he got them because he was in front of the quarterback. You know, a lot of teams can um, can scheme around defensive ends. We can step up in the pocket. We can get the ball out. We can um, slide guys to the backside and watch front side ends or whatever. It's hard to deal with three takes bombarding the pocket. So with three takes becoming more important, I think guards are going to become more important. So I encourage the guards to go out there and make your money. <clears throat> When are you going to do a video analysis of Carl Granderson? I probably won't. Probably won't. Uh, I'm getting a big feeling the Packers will make a, a big draft trade like last year with the Cowboys, maybe. Nah. I don't know why you're getting that feeling. <laughs> I don't know why you're getting that feeling. Is that what the um is that what the uh beat writers talking about? What the what the Packers beat writers are talking about? Uh trading back to get more picks and the Cowboys going into the first round because they want a first round pick? Like is is, is that what they're talking about? <clears throat> I ain't with that. Um, I was never a Zach Allen guy. Everybody was talking. Um, every, everybody was talking, but I never really saw it. Uh, Zach Allen kind of let Nas down in the um, Senior Bowl and the Senior Bowl practices or whatever. So, yeah, yeah. you think the Cowboys draft a receiver? Mm. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. But we got a lot of receivers. Um, hell, you got plenty of receivers, man. Of course, it's Cooper and Gallup, but then it's Noah and Cedric Wilson. Depends on what we do with bees. I don't know. So I, I don't know if the Cowboys draft the receiver early, but mm. <clears throat> um, blah, 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 blah. yo, Vaj, can we get some DB draft stuff? I hate watching DBs. I hate watching DBs. What up, Stephen Benzik, the goat? Yo, Coach, what's up? What's up, brother? Uh, da, 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 da. Do you see anyone moving up to take quarterback this year? I see guys moving up to take quarterbacks next year, but I don't know. Taco Charlton busted so hard he had a kid. Nah. Nah. I ain't really say nobody. I ain't really here to say nobody busted yet. Look at my wife, Nene, man. Look, Nene say, and she found a way to change her name to Nene in the goddamn child. Hey, chat box, clap it up for my wife, Nene, man. Put some clap emojis in the chat box for my wife, Nene. First of all, getting everybody on task and and changing her damn YouTube name. Nene. <laughs> clap it up for the lady, please, please, please. Uh, Mac has a three-text movement with the one-tech body, definitely a day-two pick. I don't agree. I don't think Dalen Mack has the movement of a three-tech, especially not the movement of these three-techs. These three-techs can move. I think three-techs are evolving, and Dalen Mack could probably be a, a, a three-tech in the 90s, but, boy, three-techs these days, pfft. oh, good luck to you. Good luck to you, fam. I uh, haven't watched Darnell Savage or Thornhill. Uh Mac had, okay. Uh, do you still want David Irvin? Nah, man, he's not available. He's not mentally there, man. He's not available. <clears throat> Thoughts on Kalen Saunders come um coming out of nowhere. I don't necessarily think he came out of nowhere. I think, you know, I think the film guys knew. Um, but I still don't think he's worked his way into like any top top consideration here. Um he had a great senior bowl and that helped him out. Um, but I still think he'll be one of those later guys. Um, you think Quinn and Williams will be there at five? No. You think Simmons off the field issue? Uh, what's Jeffrey Simmons' off the field issue? Is he gun under the seat guy? Is he kidnap my girlfriend guy? Is he I hate football guy? You know? What is it? I roll up, I roll up. Uh, what's his what's his issue? <clears throat> What's your thoughts on Jalen Ferguson? I like Jalen Ferguson. Um, I think he's a pure pass rusher. He kind of gets lost in the lost in the run game. He punched a woman in high school. Uh, this may sound insensitive, but I think it's appropriate if I say it in this way. We know the type of culture that we live in. 
Unfortunately. We know um, social media and how social media is, you know. We know some people only get enraged when other people are enraged. What I think this comes down to is, is there a video of it? Is there a video? If there's not a video of Jeffrey Simmons hitting some girl, then I don't think it's a problem. But if it's a video, they're going to do that stupid ass um Marlon uh uh Mixon, Joe Mixon shit. They're going to do that stupid Joe Mixon shit and they're going to play it. Joe Mixon moves smooth on. Never got into another fight again. But damn, Joe Mixon gets drafted, and on the 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 biggest day of his life, the biggest day of Joe Mixon's life, they're gonna play a video on television with his mama watching. They're gonna play a video of him fighting a girl in high school, or, or some, or, or when he was a, a freshman or whatever. And I think that's pretty trash, man. <clears throat> I think that's pretty trash, man. So as far as Jeffrey Simmons go, I'm here. I'm seeing y'all say that there's a video or whatever. Well, okay, whatever. Um, if it happened in high school, I mean, Jeffrey a grown ass man now, you know. Fuck out of here. <laughs> but you know how it goes. You know how that shit go. You know how that shit go. Um, uh, Mixon is lucky he didn't kill that girl, dude. Florida, dude. You know, Haley, you 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 seem like a like a like a like a very down to earth type of chick. I very much so agree with you. Uh, he's lucky he didn't kill her. And your earlier comment as well. Um, I um I do think he's a high school. He he was a high schooler when he did it. He's a grown ass man now. Let him fly. Totally agree with you there. Um. Um. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Let's see. What else we got? Let's let's get like three more questions in, and I'm, then we're gonna get about here. Slim Shady. How to dinner set of twin babies in a Mercedes Benz with the windows up, with the tent goes up in the mid eighties. In a pan lady, sorry doc, but I've been crazy. In a way that you can't save me. It's okay, go with him, Haley. Okay, um, <laughs> uh, that was a boy in drag. Oh, that's fucked up. Oh, <laughs> uh, 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 Jeffrey. I'm about to be insensitive. I'm about to be insensitive now. Boy, if Jeffrey Simmons knocked out a dude in the dress, oh, the LBGT community will be all over that shit. Look, domestic violence community is one thing. But, man, if Jeffrey Simmons knocked out a dude in the dress, boy. Boy, will the LBGT community be all over that one. (laughs) That ain't funny. (laughs) But if it's a dude in the dress, it's a little funny. All right, cool. We back. Okay, cool. Um, all right, y'all. I think this is my time to wrap it up. <laughs> Fuck, I get in trouble. Uh, so, um, yes, like this video if you haven't already. Hit the subscribe button if you're a Cowboys fan. Uh, me and Foots the King are going to do a Dallas Cowboy draft uh live stream later. You know, uh, Foots is uh is is very um you know. He's on his whole time deal. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> whenever that is, I don't know, but it's going to be later. So make sure you hit the bell so you get the notification bell. So you get the notification when I, um, you know, when I uh, go live with him. But, uh, hey, man, with that being said, y'all hold it down for the Doski Walsh. The peace is implied. I'm not going to rap about Eminem. What if she says something about his mama? Was he back on the block? If somebody said something about my mama and it was a girl, I wouldn't hit her, but I'll, I'll like, get my cousins or, like, my sisters to go whoop her ass or something. So <laughs> that's what we do back in the day. Hey, man, y'all hold it down, man. Peace, y'all. Salute.